Hello friends, it's Carissa. I decided to hop on and do a tapping session with you today about the general concept of nobody wants what I have to offer. This is a very common thing amongst artists, musicians, creators of all kinds. Essentially, there's this belief that I, I create this wonderful thing. I think it's wonderful, but nobody seems to want it or value it. Some variation of that theme is running probably no matter where you are in your process. So this can be a really effective thing for you to tap along on, even if you're not feeling it very strongly in the front of your consciousness right now. And the way that I was reminded about this is today I caught myself in my self-talk saying something really interesting and definitely not true along those lines. I'm, I was thinking in my head and ruminating about something as I sometimes get caught up doing. And I heard myself say, the people that really value me and get me don't have any money to pay me. And the people that have all the money don't get me. So here I am very conveniently caught in between this rock and hard place of supposedly the people that get me don't have money and the people that have money don't get me. So they're not valuing what I have to offer. And when I heard myself say that it was so blatantly untrue and definitely a false belief that needs to be deconstructed. And I, ha I knew that there, there have to be other people out there with the same thing lurking in their consciousness because with as much tapping as I do and self-reflection as I do, if that's still living in my head, there's probably a couple things banging around in yours that we could just bring up for review and find that piece of ourselves that believes that, bring it forward into our awareness until we make the unconscious conscious. It will rule us and we will call it fate. So let's make that part of our shadow self conscious, bring it up, bring it into the fold, accept it, love on it, accept its funky desires and, and wants and needs that seem to be totally opposed to what we want in our conscious and our egoic minds. Bring it into the fold, accept it, integrate it. EFT helps us to do that. EFT, again, I'll reiterate, it's not about getting rid of things that you don't like about yourself. It's about accepting what is, bringing to your awareness what is. And if there's any emotional charge around what is, helping to neutralize that so that you can get to a place where you're integrating and accepting yourself and get to a place where you're clear enough that you can drop programming that is not helpful to you and reprogram yourself with programming that is helpful to you. So let's start out with this. Nobody wants me or nobody wants what I have to offer. Or maybe the people that do are too broke to pay me. And this this can stem from two very common directions that I can't find my people or my people can't find me. And there's a very much an invisibility thing and being safe and staying small. And then there's another part of it that that where it is really just about you know, the the ability to afford the people who get me and, and value me can't afford me and the people who can't afford me don't value what I'm offering. So we'll we'll work on both of those. And again, you're going to need to be specific. You're going to need to keep tapping till you get to that zero point with how you're feeling about the thing. Or at least till you start to feel tired and feel like your field is ready for a break. And that's when you stop. So let's start with the finding being invisible self-acceptance point even though I can't find my people and they can't find me I deeply and completely accept my situation even though I must be invisible because my people can't see me I deeply and completely accept myself even though I can't find my people and I seem to be the best kept secret and that's really lonely and scary I deeply and completely accept myself I'm invisible nobody can see me Nobody can see my work. 
Nobody listens to my music. It's safe to be quiet. It's safe to be small. Some part of me really likes being invisible. Unknown. Unacknowledged. If I put myself out there, they'll take shots at me. They'll criticize me. I'm going to have haters. I'm not sure I can take that. I don't know if I'm strong enough for success. I don't think I want to be seen. I'm afraid for someone to know me. I'm afraid for them to see my work. I don't really want them to listen to my music. What if they don't like it? What if they say mean things? Just like he did. What if they criticize me and tell me I'm not good enough? Just like she used to. Who wants that? I don't want that. I'd rather stay unknown. I don't want my people to find me. I don't want anyone to find me. I want to create in safety. In my little cave. Forever unknown. Let's just take a breath. thinking about what you're experiencing in your body. If a physical sensation is very noticeable to you now, I would tap on that next. Even though I have this whatever sensation related to being seen, something along those lines, go with a physical sensation. Or if a particular situation has popped into your head where you're thinking about being seen and feeling uncomfortable feelings related to that, I would tap there next. And because we're moving on to kind of a different aspect of this issue, if you want to stop and do that now, pause the video before we move on, that'd be a good idea. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about this whole belief, this false belief that the people who get you can't afford you and the people who can't afford you don't appreciate or value what you're doing. So we'll start there thinking of how you feel about this matter. Again, if you'd like to use the scale one to 10, how upset are you about it right now? Do that, it'll help you pinpoint your progress, okay? Even though the people who value me don't have enough money to pay me what I'm worth, and that's an impossible situation, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though there's nobody out there who can afford me and who also appreciates me. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though rich people don't value what I have to offer and broke people always want it for free, I deeply and completely appreciate my own worth. Eyebrow. No one can afford to pay me. Someone can afford to pay me. There's so much money in circulation in this world. Lots of rich people. Lots of disposable income. I wonder why it's not coming toward me. What's stopping all my money from flowing in? I acknowledge there's something stopping the flow. I have this false belief that only poor people can get me. Only people with not much disposable income value what I offer. Only other broke musicians appreciate my music. Only starving artists can see my talent. 
And if that's true, I can stay safely small. I don't have to move into the big scary world of success. I can stay right here, poor and safe, in a way of life that I know and understand. What would happen if people with money valued my work? What would happen if people with lots of disposable income chose to give it to me? Who would I become with all that money? What would they expect of me? Would I be enough? Would my work be enough? Is it possible for people with money to value me enough to pay me? I'm afraid it's not possible. It seems it's not possible. I'm thinking it may not be possible. Okay, let's take a breath. Focusing now on a physical sensation, a specific story, or a particular emotion that has risen up as a result of this first round of tapping. And I'm just going to use the words, this sensation, and you can put in specifically what you're feeling, a heaviness in your gut, tightness in the chest, whatever it is. We're just going to move into the body to see where we are. Even though there's this part of me that doesn't believe that I'm worth it. And I don't know if I like that part of me. I deeply and completely accept all of myself as is. Even though there's a part of me that thinks only poor people will get me And that people with money won't value me at all. I deeply and completely accept my weird programming. Even though there's a part of me that seems to want the opposite of what I want. And we're at odds right now. I deeply and completely accept every part of who I am. Part of me is opposed to my success. I'm not sure how to fix this. I'm not sure it needs fixing. Maybe I don't want success. Maybe I'm fine just the way I am. Maybe it's safer to be poor. Maybe it's safer to be resourced. Maybe I'd be really, really safe with lots of resource. Maybe I'd feel confident. Maybe I'd feel more secure. How interesting that I might feel even less afraid with more resource. How interesting there's a part of me that always wants to keep me safe. How interesting there's a part of me that enjoys everything about my life, even the crappy stuff. I really appreciate my inner ability to appreciate everything. That part of me that loves being broke and small, I love you too. I see you. I love you. You're a part of my configuration. You're a part of the composition that is me. Dissonance is a part of harmony. Opposition is a part of harmony. Tension is a part of harmony. I appreciate my inner composition. I appreciate my inner composition. I invite my shadow to talk to me. I appreciate my shadow. I appreciate that some part of me likes everything. I appreciate all parts of me. 
as I make my unconscious parts conscious, I integrate them into all that I am. I am becoming more aware. I am becoming conscious. I'm learning to appreciate all of me. I'm learning to understand me. I'm learning me. I'm learning how to do me. Just do me. I'm taking a breath. That one ended up kind of going to an interesting place about shadow work and how we can delve into appreciating and being aware of the parts of us that seemingly oppose what we consciously want. And again, I love EFT as a tool for helping to expedite that process. It can be a little tricky to navigate on your own, I will tell you, because we can't always see our own shadows. <laughs> Sometimes we need to work in community or with a practitioner to really get in and begin to uncover those things that we have purposefully obscured from our own eyes because that's the nature of the unconscious. It doesn't want you to be aware of these things because once you're aware, you're empowered to shift. These things kind of cease having this oppositional adversarial life of their own when compared with your conscious desires. They come to integrate and to work with you towards your conscious desires. But that's kind of a it's kind of a death process. It, it feels to that piece of your psyche like it's going to cease to exist. So it's going to try to stay underneath your radar as long as possible. So keeping all that in mind, sometimes it's good if you're going to get into the more shadowy stuff to work with somebody who knows what's up with that and can help you see yourself. I certainly do. None of us can see ourselves no matter how good our eyesight. So... <laughs> Keep tapping on that second part of the issue. This The people that get me can't afford me and the people with the money don't appreciate me. Keep working on that until your physical sensation piece dies down, until the emotional charge dies down, until your scale of 1 to 10 on how you're feeling on it is close to zero, or until you feel that sense of peace or tiredness in your field and you feel done. If you have any questions, feel free to get at me on my website contact page. And happy tapping! <laughs>